words the Lord gave me for you. How do we transform our mind? We each have three worlds that are a part of us. We stay out of the past. It's a no place. God's not back there. We stay out of the future. The Bible warns against the sin of plans and presumptions. And I believe why most people don't have a life that they're like walking the miraculous. And let me tell you, anything else is too low. I want to attempt something so impossible that without God, it's destined to fail. I pray that there be a reconciliation of your past, the present, and the future with the truth of God in the peace of God. Because where a lot of us spend a lot of our lives is carrying around this big old baggage of the past. In the old days in Israel, what they would do when someone murdered someone, they would strap the dead body to their back so that it would just eat into them and they'd eventually die. That's what a lot of people do. If they don't get what the blood of Jesus was all about, they carry all that past around on their back so it's eaten into you. So you wonder why you're having back troubles? You wonder why you're having trouble sleeping? It's because you're trying to carry that load. And God said, let me chop it off. Did you ask me in your heart? Did you repent? Well, then be forgiven. And you keep whining about, oh, I'm a sinner. No, you're not. God took perfect seed, put it in you, and said, let us make a man in our own image. And he looked down and said, we did good. That's what he said about you. It's only good. It's only God. We've got to get free of the past. As the triune Godhead, Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit, so there is in your three places, your three lives, your past, your present, and your future. But may there be a reconciliation of your past, present, and the future. May God reconcile that. That the pollution of the past not leak into today. What some of you may not know, one of Jesus' greatest things he does, he is the most incredible garbage collector. I mean, you talk about he is a garbage collector like you have never seen. What we need to do tonight is throw all our garbage away. Amen. Amen. Let the garbage collector come and just take all the mess away. Are you willing? Aren't you tired of that stinky stuff? It's like that steak you grilled last night. You're not keeping the bones and putting them on display, are you? The fat? No, you throw the garbage into the trash. You throw the trash into your garbage can. The garbage man takes it away, and you never see it again. Has anyone here gone back to the dump? Please let me find that old steak bone I had last night. I don't think so. Let the dead bury the dead. When Jesus called a man, he said, let me go back. He said, no, no man. When he puts his hand, the plow and looks back as fit for the kingdom of God. Let the dead bury the dead. So some of you walked in here with some stanky garbage of the past. And we're going to get rid of it. Because Jesus is going to give you a dumpster tonight. And you're going to throw all that mess in it. Let's take an act of faith. Let's stand up. Like when we take our garbage out, we have to stand up. It's an act of our will. I'm going to take this old stinky trash out, and I'm never going to see it again. And I'm going to trust the trash man to take it away as far as the east is from the west to be remembered no more. Amen? So I'm going to pray and ask God to give everyone in here their own dumpster, just your size. Some of us need giant dumpsters. Some of us just need little dumpsters. But whatever your size is, that's what you're going to have for all your junk. So don't look at anybody else's dumpster. Amen? This is Father Son time. This is father-daughter time, and I'm going to pray. So you just deal with your own junk. Father, I thank you. I thank you for the blood atonement. By Jesus' stripes, we're healed. By his blood, we stand forgiven when we confess our sins. And Lord, as an act of our will tonight, we throw all of our garbage in the dumpster, the people, the places, and the things of the past, everything that's not good for us, the lie, error, and deception, and the unforgiveness, the bitterness, the anger, the rage, the addictions, the lust, all that garbage, God. Shine your brightest spotlight from heaven from the top of each of our our heads to the bottom of our feet if it doesn't look holy if it doesn't look like you we throw it in the dumpster purge us mighty god tonight and we just fill our dumpster full lord i thank you for total deliverance freedom and life tonight i curse the death and the defilement of the past and i command it to loose you in jesus name and that spirit of condemnation and torment that's been taunting you your whole life get the hell off these people in jesus name so lord we just throw it all in the dumpster and jesus i ask you to come in here and just pick up all the dumpsters. Pick up all the dumpsters, God. Take all the dumpsters, mighty God, as far as the east is from the west, to be remembered no more. Throw them in the bottom of the sea. Thank you for total deliverance of the past, God. From this moment back, there is nothing. It's gone. It's gone. It's gone. You're free. In Jesus' name, amen. You may be seated. Thank you, Father. 
Amen. Isn't it good? You don't ever have to think back there. Don't trouble God about any of that stuff. He'll say, I don't know what you're talking about. Stay out of plans and presumptions. We should see what's going on in heaven and bring it down. And I ask God to give you dreams and visions. Keep a notepad by your bed. Write down your dreams God gives you. 2 Corinthians 5, 17 through 19 says, Therefore, if any man is in Christ, he is a new creature. The old things have passed away. Behold, new things have come. Now all these things are from God who reconciled himself through Christ and gave us the ministry of reconciliation. Namely, that God was in Christ reconciling the world to himself, not counting their trespasses against them, and he has committed to us the word of reconciliation. Therefore, we are ambassadors for Christ as though God were entreating through us we beg you on behalf of Christ be reconciled to God all this is from God all has to go back to Christ the acknowledgement of the sovereignty of God through Christ that all of our experiences have been reconciling us to God himself everything you've been through even if you thought it was a wrong turn it's all been used to reconcile you back to God some of us took such a wrong path, God had to take the wheels off our car. He had to take the engine out. He had to let us run out of gas. He had to let us get to the end of a dead end street. We're looking over the cliff and he said, now are you going to listen to me? God said in Jeremiah 15, 19 through 21, and it's a place no matter where you are, you can come to this place. God said, if you return to me, I'll restore you. Before me, you will stand. So wherever you are tonight, return to him. So he can restore you that you stand before him. And then he said, if you extract the precious from the worthless, you can be my spokesman. We don't even know what's precious and what's worthless. We spend precious lives protecting worthless things. So let's let him extract the precious from the worthless tonight so we can be his spokespeople. God loves you. He loves you so much. And he's just not going to quit. Amen. The road's been long and the road's been hard, but he loves you. He's going to use you mightily. He's going to take all the things in your life and turn them for good, for his honor and glory. So keep going. You're precious to him. Amen. Amen. It's only good. You know, God's never had a problem with our lives. He's just the big dad. He just sits up there waiting. Mm -hmm. They're going to get sick and tired of being sick and tired. They'll come home. They'll come home. They'll come home. The past is a no place. Live in the fullness of today. Walk toward tomorrow. If we don't have a yesterday, good, bad, or indifferent, the past is a no place. It was just for your training. It was just to teach you what you needed to learn for where you're going. So you could go rip the prison doors open and let other people go free. Live in the fullness of today and walk toward tomorrow. 2 Corinthians 6, 16 through 18 says, Or what agreement has the temple of God with idols? For we are the temple of the living God. Just as God said, I will dwell in them and walk among them, and I will be their God and they shall be my people. Therefore come out from their midst and be separate, says the Lord, and do not touch what is unclean, and I will welcome you, and I will be a father to you, and you shall be sons and daughters to me says the almighty God no one I promise you from God almighty has a problem if you're the child of a living God there's no way you can have a problem because problems don't exist where he is Romans 8 28 for God causes all things to work together for good it means when anything comes toward you it has to turn to be an instrument of good in your life do you get that intellect no test lasts forever. We all have tests. Life's a test, merely a test. But when you pass your test, you get promoted to the next test. And then the next test, and then the next test, and the next test. Amen? We're going from glory to glory to glory to glory. And it's all good. So let's quit looking at each other. Let's quit blaming. Amen? Because God knows everyone in your life. He knows he put them there for a very special purpose for you. If they bug you, when they don't bug you anymore, your test will be over. Good way to live, isn't it? Just look in your own mirror. You'll have plenty to deal with. God will not violate man's will until you come to that place where you thirst for the living water. Then God will reconcile all things. God will reconcile all things when it's just him that you want. He'll reconcile all things to himself. My loving hand will bring you back. Our hope and reliance is upon the mercy of his loving hand. Then God goes beyond reconciling your past. 
present and future to reconciling your body, soul, and spirit into one flow with himself. Take your hands off the oars. When Jesus came, the word speaks when he walked to the disciples and there was a big storm. The word says they were straining at the oars. Let's keep our hands off the oars said, I'm sending you out as sheep in the midst of wolves. Therefore, be wise as a serpent and innocent as doves. And when they bring you before governors and kings, don't worry about what you're going to say. For the Holy Spirit will give you utterance that none of your enemies can resist or refute. What they do to me, they'll do to you. A servant's not greater than his master. But what I tell you in the darkness, proclaim it from the rooftops. And as you confess me, I'll confess you. You deny me, I'll deny you. Don't think I came to bring peace. I came to bring a sword. I came to divide every relationship that would keep you from me. And then he said, you receive a prophet, you get their reward. You receive a righteous man, you get their reward. And I tell you, you won't even give a cup of cold water in Jesus' name that you won't give a reward. Do it as unto the Lord. Let's bless the Jesus in one another. Let's outgive each other. Let's outbless each other. God said, when brethren dwell together, it is his oil flowing over Aaron's beard. And there he commands the blessing. This is a place of commanded blessing. So let's think the best of each other. Let's love each other. Let's thank God for one another. It's good to have the family of God. This is a holy thing, having a family of God. I'm going to pray. Father, I thank you for this people. I speak life to the dead things, the marriages, the hopes, the dreams, the visions, the bodies that have died. I curse the death over this people in this land in Jesus' name. And I speak, Lazarus, come forth. Come forth, live. Live. Live bodies. Live minds, souls, spirits, wills, emotions, calls, finances, businesses. Live. God, breathe on these slain that they come to life, a great and mighty army. Lord, I just thank you for life, that you went to Lazarus' tomb and you said, come out, live. And Lord, we give you praise for life, that where the river of God flows, everything lives. So Lord, that your kids will just jump in the river and live tonight. In Jesus' mighty name. And Lord, I ask you to impart a mantle on everyone here. The mantle that Elijah laid on Elisha. Anoint God for service, I pray. Meet every need and heal every hurt. Father, I thank you that all the doors of the pastor shut. And I thank you for entrance into new beginnings. Lord, open a door in everyone's life yeah. to pursue and fulfill the call. And Lord, we pray unity harmony and purpose in every home in this household of faith and we give you praise and glory and honor in Yeshua's mighty name. Amen. God bless you guys. We love you.